joining us right now spends most of his time putting out fires as a battalion chief in South Florida, Broward County. But Michael Anisi is making a name for himself, getting people fired up. He's joining us now to talk about his new book, The Victory Cycle. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much. First of all, how do you go from being a firefighter to writing a book about success? Well, I'll tell you what, in firefighting, there's a lot to do with leadership. And this is about personal leadership. The, the victory cycle is about leading yourself to a better, better life. Um, I spent a lot of time in leadership classes and so forth and business classes for the fire department, but I wanted to bring that same concept to the person at home and bring that, simplify that concept with the victory cycle. And you're also a motivational speaker. Where are you speaking and where will you be speaking? This month I'm going to be speaking at the Wellington Rotary Club, and I'm also going to be going to Boston the beginning of December speaking at the Harvard Coop. And then also I'm working on some things with the Boys and Girls Club as well. You are quite the busy man. That is true. Now, in this book, you also talk about obstacles because that tends to block everybody from success. So what's some of the biggest things getting in our way from being successful? Well, I'll tell you, fear is one big problem for everybody. Fear is an obstacle that people can't get past because it gets in their mind. It, gets, it sets in there. It's a, it's a reaction that's visceral. It happens at the moment that, that an obstacle comes along. We have to take that time and reframe that fear. In essence, like when I talk to the young firefighters, when we come to a house that's on fire, the, the building's burning. The fear is going to come up. We have to reframe that fear into we're going to be saving lives and we're going to be making things better. And then the same thing applies in your life. When something bad happens, you have to reframe that fear and make it turn out to be a better outcome for yourself by thinking through it and stepping over those obstacles. I was going to say, so how do you retrain your whole thought process in your brain to you know, to prevent you from being afraid of something that's fearful in your life. Well, you have to you have to reframe it. You have to look at it just like in mar another example, martial arts. When someone's coming at you with a punch or a throw, you have to use their strength against them. And it's the same thing here. When the, when the fear comes along, it's adrenaline. So you want to use that adrenaline to fuel your your mission, fuel your victory for yourself. And that's a reframing. You have to rethink things and think of things going right rather than things going wrong. And that's a big step for most people, but we outline that pretty well in the book. And what's the most impressive success story that you've uh, witnessed or been a part of? Interestingly, I have a young lady that's up in Maine. I've been speaking with her. We do coaching as well. And she has started the Victory Cycle. And she started out wanting to climb a mountain. That was her big thing. She wanted to climb the mountain. But she also, on a sideline, wanted to lose some weight. So she started focusing on some small steps. And she started some small hikes. And as she's been doing it, she calls me, she tells me now she lost eight weeks, I'm sorry, eight pounds in one week. And she's been trying to, like, structure herself slowly. She has a year out from this big mountain climb, and she's been really just digging right into this victory cycle. Very focused. Yes. Now, you've brought your seven steps to success, seven steps to victory with you. Correct. Kind of walk us through each of these steps and give us a brief overview of one through seven. Okay, well, vision, it starts at vision. Vision, is, in essence, is a compelling purpose. That is the way we start from. You have to get a real clear vision, so clear to you that it, you can really touch it. You can see it, feel it, and describe it perfectly. You move then to inspiration. Inspiration is all about what inspires you, your why. Okay, what is, what is your why? Why are you doing this? You move then to commitment. Commitment is your how. That is your how. You have to be committed to your vision and your inspiration. We then step into time steps, which is in essence your plan. Okay, it's small steps. It's what are we going to do today, the end of the week, next month, three months, six, nine, and a year. We project that way out. Does that involve actually writing steps down? Yes. In the book, there's steps. It's each, each one of these has a little uh, ac activity. And you step through time steps. Next thing is obstacles, because when every, any good plan, you're going to have problems. There's going to be challenges, there's obstacles. So we have to anticipate those. So after we go through obstacles, what do we do when we succeed? We rejoice. We celebrate life. We have to enjoy our lives, right? Because it's, what's wor it's only worth it if we're enjoying ourselves. Year-long adjustments, in essence, is coming back and doing a 360 evaluation of what's going right and what's going wrong with our vision. So it brings us back to vision. We adjust those little changes to make everything work for us. And you keep doing this every day. In the morning, you say, geez, I'm going to celebrate my victory today. I'm going to work through it. At the end of the day, you say to yourself, did I honor my victory? Did I do what I needed to do to make it happen? And that's how you work this thing every day. Well, fantastic. You must have done something right because you're a battalion chief. So I'll take your word for it. I look forward to reading your book as well. Thank and you. good luck at your speaking engagements. We'll be looking to hear a lot more from you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.